Good morning, internet friends. Top of the morning to you. My name is Yuvraj, and in today's video, I'm going to talk to you about how to add the article schema to your pages and posts using Schema Pro. So I'm already inside my WordPress dashboard, but first we need to talk about why do you need to add the article type schema to your pages and posts. Well, talking about the article type schema, the results of adding the article type schema to your pages and posts has a more of a subtle difference as compared to something like recipes where you would end up with having uh, star ratings or some additional information in the search results. With the article type schema, the benefits are up to Google's discretion. But one thing is for sure, when you add the article type schema to your pages and posts, you give Google a lot of context about what your page is about. So enough information, let's hear it from the big G Google itself on what they do when you add article type schema on your pages and posts. So I have the official Google documentation open up for the article type schema. So let's hear what Google has to say about the article type schema first. Adding article structure data to your news, blog, and sports article page can enhance your appearance in Google search results. Your page may be eligible for different features depending on how you code your page. And as you can see, there are two categories that Google is saying. One is AMP with structured data, that means the article type schema, and second one is non-AMP web page with structured data, that means a non-AMP or accelerated mobile pages with the article type schema. So if you have AMP, you probably will get more benefits. I'll talk to you about the benefits in a second. So coming to the benefits, the AMP pages have some additional benefits. So let's see what Google has to say. AMP pages with structured data can appear in top stories carousel, host carousel of rich results, visual stories, and rich results in mobile search results. These results can include images, page logos, and other interesting search result features. So a lot of information to see. So what I'll do is just share an example with you on what it looks like. So I just Google iPhone 12 launch and coincidentally at the date of this recording, the iPhone is launching today in a few hours probably. So when I search the iPhone 12 launch, I see top stories. And what do you know? What did Google say about AMP pages having structured data? It can appear with images, the page logo, and it can appear in top stories, which is exactly what is happening. So it's a perfect example of adding the proper marked up structured data, article type structured data on your web pages. Coming back to the non-AMP web pages with structured data. So non-AMP pages that include article structured data can help Google understand more about the web page and show better headline text, images, and date published for the article in article results. So what Google is saying that once Google understands your page, it can rewrite the titles and some other information about your page, show some images uh, with your results, and enhance the results in a way so that you can get more traffic to your website. At least this is what I interpret from what Google is saying. So what that means is, let's go down to some regular results that when you have the article type schema on non-AMP pages, then the titles and the other information that is displayed around the page. For example, some results are time sensitive. So Google may decide to show up the exact date on when the content was published. As you can see here, 14 hours ago, four hours ago, three hours ago, because this is a time sensitive query, as you can expect with the announcement of a new iPhone. But some for some other queries, the time might not be shown. So this is up to Google's discretion, as I said. But as Google has clearly said, you will definitely get some of the benefits no matter what kind of query you have. In some results or in some queries, you might have more benefits and in some you might have less benefits, but you will get benefits of having the article type schema on your website or your web pages specifically. So let's go back to the website and I'll show you how to start adding the article type structured data or schema to your pages and posts using Schema Pro because it's a wonderful plugin and it will save you a lot of time. Okay, I'm inside my website. So to start adding any kind of schema using Schema Pro, all I have to do is take the first step, which is go to Settings, Schema Pro. So this is the default page that you should see. And if you have created any kind of schemas as I have, you'll see it right here. Now we're creating a new type of schema. So instead of using any of these schemas, I'll create a new schema by going to the Add New button right here. And this is the first step in creating any kind of schema. As you can see, a lot of type of schemas are supported and you have to select the one that you are trying to add to your pages and posts. In our case, it's the article type schema. So I'll select the article schema and click the next button. Now these are the targeting options. Now what is or what is meant by targeting options? So let me explain how Schema Pro works. So what Schema Pro does is it works on a template based system. So instead of adding schema manually to each page or post, what you do is create a template, set up some variables and define on what pages you want that schema to be added 
and Schema Pro will take care of the rest. No matter if you are adding it to 100 pages or 1,000 pages, this system works perfectly. So this is the option or these are the, these are the options by which you decide on what pages or posts you want the article type schema to be added to. So there are two types of uh, targeting options. You have inclusions options and you have exclusion options. So inclusion means that whenever whatever rules you set up here, all the pages that qualify will get the schema. And in the exclusion rules, all the pages that qualify will not get the schema. So let me show you the options quickly. So you have access to some basic rules. You have the basic option, which includes all singulars and front page. All singulars means all the pages and posts on your website. The front page means the front page that you've selected inside the WordPress settings. All posts means all the posts on your website. All pages means all the pages on your website. And specific targeting includes specific pages, posts, or archives. That means you can select taxonomies or decide to add schema to a single page or post. That is also possible. So since the article schema is usually added to a lot of posts or all the posts, I'll just simply select the all posts option right here. And I'm gonna click the next button. All right, the schema has been created. So I'll complete the setup and we'll go to the next step. Okay, the schema has been created and now we are in the edit schema screen. This is where we'll complete the configuration of the schema and how it appears or is added to your pages and posts. Let me tell you about all the options in the edit schema page. The first option is where you can edit the name of the schema. Now you have the option of naming the schema because you can have the same type of schema in different variations on different pages. For example, you might have a different kind of schema for your regular blog posts and you might have a different kind of schema for news-based articles. So Schema Pro allows you to name them differently so that you can easily identify and apply the right schema to the right pages. The next option is the targeting options, which we already discussed, and you can edit them here, but it will inherit the settings that we just configured in the previous steps. As you can see, I set it to all posts, which is inherited here. The next and the last option is the most important aspect of Schema Pro. And this is where we tell Schema Pro what data needs to be added to the post as schema. So Schema Pro works on a variable mapping system. That means you don't have to add schema to your pages or posts manually. Instead, Schema Pro can map data from your post, your pages, or your website and dynamically add it to your schema. Let me explain what I mean. As you can see, there are different kinds of fields that we need to configure in the article type schema. And if you want to understand what individual fields represent, then we have a link to a helpful blog post. If you go to the blog post, you'll find all the details about the article type schema and also a detailed description of what the fields mean. So if my explanation is not sufficient enough, you can always go to this blog post and I'll also leave a link to this blog post in the description. So if you're not a Schema Pro customer, you can also check it out. Now, whenever we add schema to any page or post, there's one important thing that we need to remember. There are two types of fields that schema has. One are mandatory fields, which are denoted by a red asterisk just next to them. And the other fields, which do not have a red asterisk next to them, are recommended fields. According to Google, you can just fill in the mandatory fields and your page will still qualify for rich results and the recommended fields can be left blank. But in with Schema Pro, you don't have to do that because Schema Pro can map existing data from your pages and posts to your schema, as I mentioned earlier. So let me explain what the fields are and let me also explain the mapping feature or the variable mapping feature, which is at the heart of Schema Pro and how it saves you time and makes your life easier. Okay, so we have different kinds of fields. The first field is the article type field, which is a mandatory field, as you can see, and there are a bunch of options to choose from. So if I select the or click the drop down menu, you'll see the options on the screen. The article option is there. You have the advertiser content article, blog posting, news article, report, satirical article, scholarly article, and tech article. Now these options are pretty self-explanatory. If you're writing a news article, you have to select the news type. If it's a general blog post, just use the blog posting. Or if it's a satirical piece, then use the satirical article option. So I leave it to blog posting for a more general approach. The next option is the author name. Now, as you can see, the author name already has a field author name in it. Now, if I select or click the drop down menu, you'll see a bunch of options. And these are the variables that Schema Pro has access to. And it has already figured that since you are configuring the author name, author name metadata is the most appropriate. Now, what that means is that whenever Schema Pro is adding schema to a page and it's filling in the author name field, it will look at the author of the page and add that data dynamically to the post. 
the image option which is the next option is again a similar thing the image option is being mapped to the featured image that you have on the post itself so you don't have to add an image manually schema pro will fetch the featured image and add it to the schema the next option is the short description which is the excerpt of the page the next option is the url option which is the permalink of the post which makes sense the next option is the headline and it is mapped to the title of the post, which also makes sense. Now you do have the option of customizing any of these fields. If you just have to click the drop down menu and you'll be able to see all the different kinds of fields you have access to. For the headline, I'll just leave it at the title because it makes the most sense. Next, you have the published date and Schema Pro automatically detects when did you publish your post and fetch that date and put it in the schema. The next option is the modified date. Whenever you update a post, it's worthwhile to communicate to Google that this post was recently updated so that Google can serve it to the appropriate audience. And Schema Pro does that automatically by selecting the last modified date from your website and inserting it into the schema. The next option is the publisher name, which is the site title. So if you have your personal name attached to your website, it will be added here. And if you have an organization type website and you have your brand name here, it will also be added to your website or the schema. The next option is the publisher logo and obviously the existing logo of your website is being mapped to the schema. So now you understand how Schema Pro saves you time by mapping already existing data from your pages and posts and your website and putting it dynamically in schema. This approach is very automated and using this approach we can add schema to a lot of pages at the same time. For example, if you had 100 different posts on your website and you just added the schema, then all those posts will get this exact schema instantly. Isn't that amazing? The approach is perfect for whether you have a small website or your website with thousands of posts, Schema Pro can take all the hard work out of creating, managing and updating schema on your website and make your life a lot easier. And the best part is, Every time you update your post and change any of these fields, Schema Pro will automatically update the schema of your page to reflect those changes. That is even more amazing. Now, since Schema Pro already mapped out all the fields that were necessary for the article type schema, we don't have to make any of the changes. All I have to do is go to the updates button and click it to save the schema. And as you can see, schema is now updated and all the posts on my website, because I've selected the targeting post all posts option, will now get the article type schema. So now let me show you how the schema appears on the page and we'll also test out the schema in the Google Rich Snippet testing tool to see if it's valid. And I'll also tell you an interesting and amazing feature of Schema Pro, which I haven't told you yet. I'm inside a post on my website. It's a simple Apple Watch 6 review. It's a dummy post. There's not much information on there. It's a small, small post. It has a featured image and it just looks like a regular blog post that you would have on your website. So this is the content of the post. Now, if you want to see the schema on the page, all I have to do is scroll a bit down. And here it is. The schema pro article type schema is appearing on the post. And as I explained earlier, all the different data required for the schema is being pulled in from the website data itself, saving manual work. Now I did say that I'll be discussing another important feature in schema pro on the previous screen. And that feature is customizing the schema. Now there are many scenarios where you'd want to have custom schema on a page or post. So instead of any of these settings as they are, you would want to customize any one of these settings. With Schema Pro, that is perfectly possible and it's very easy. All you have to do is just click this icon and add in the fields. Let me show you how it's done. Let's take, for example, I want to edit the short description and I don't want it to be the excerpt of the page. So all I have to do is click this cross or times icon as it's called and the field becomes editable and I can type in and this field is now changed. All I have to do is update the post and refresh it. And if I check the schema once again, I'll see that the short description of this post is now updated. Now the beauty of using this approach is that the short description that we just edited on this post is customized just for this post it does not affect any other post that is using the same article type template that we just created. So the secret sauce is that you can create templates that apply to hundreds or even thousands of pages while still retaining granular individual control over the schema of all these pages and even individual fields as I just showed you and the template will still remain unaffected. 
If that's not mind blowing, I don't know what is. And these changes are not permanent. For example, if I want to go back to the excerpt setting instead of the custom short description that I just wrote, all I have to do is click this wrench icon. And when I click the wrench icon, this drop down menu appears once again, but it's a little different because now it's clickable. And once I click it, all the fields that are accessible by Schema Pro from the website or the website metadata is now being made available to me. I can choose any of these options and that will be mapped to the short description of this post only. Now, obviously I won't add the published date or the last modified date to the excerpt. I'll choose the excerpt, but I'm just driving a point across that you have so much control over what you do, what type of schema you add to what pages with granular control. It is not possible with any other product on the market right now. So I'll just choose the excerpt option once again, and I'll just update the post to save these settings. I'll refresh the page and the settings are back to normal. Let's do a quick recap of what we've learned right now. I've shown you how to add the article type schema to your pages and posts, target specific post types, categories, or taxonomies for the article type schema. I've shown you how to customize the article type schema by giving it a custom name, changing the targeting options once again, and also changing the mapping of the variables that the article type schema uses. Once you create the template, you can add it to a thousand posts or hundred posts or whatever number of posts you have, while still maintaining individual control over each of the fields on each of the posts. I just hope you understand how powerful Schema Pro is with all these features and how you can start utilizing Schema on your website in a precise, automated and always updated manner. The only thing left to discuss now is actually testing the Schema. So let's do that. I'll open the post, the actual post, not the backend view, the frontend view, and we'll test the Schema. So this is how the post will look like to a user or visitor when they visit my website. Now, I want to check if the schema is properly added to this page or post. And the tool for that is called the Google Rich Snippet Testing Tool. So instead of opening the tool and then copying the link of this post and, add, and placing it there, what I'm gonna do is use another feature inside Schema Pro to simplify that process even further. This is the feature I'm talking about. It's the test schema button. It's added to all your pages and posts by default that have schema added by Schema Pro. And what it does is when you click this button, Schema Pro automatically opens up the Google Rich Snippet testing tool and adds the link of the page or post you're trying to check and also initializes the process of checking the schema as you can see on the screen right here. All right, Google has finished testing the page for schema and rich results. And as you can see, the page is eligible for rich results and also the page has detected or Google has detected the article type schema on the page with a green tick, that means it's all valid. So if I wanna see the details, I can just click this drop down right here and I can see all the details that we configured within Schema Pro being added to Schema perfectly. And the best part, as I've mentioned multiple times in this video, that anytime I make changes or update the post, schema will automatically be updated. And that takes away one of the biggest pain points when dealing with schema, keeping it up to date. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. I hope you liked the information that I shared with you. If you did, make sure to hit that like button because it encourages us to create more videos like this. And if you want to upgrade your WordPress knowledge and watch informative videos just like this one, make sure to hit the subscribe button and also click that bell icon because we create videos on a regular basis and I want to tell you about whenever I upload a new video. So make sure to hit the subscribe button and also the bell icon. And if you have any questions about Schema Pro, then leave it in the comments or better head over to wpschema.com because that's the website for Schema Pro and you'll find all the answers there. If you're not a Schema Pro customer, then definitely check it out. It's an amazing plugin and also check out some of the other amazing products that we put out. We are Brainstorm Force, we make the Astro theme, we make Schema Pro and some other amazing WordPress products. Once again, this is goodbye. My name is Yuvraj and I hope to see you in the next one. Till then, take care.